Good day, good people, and welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I am your host, Michelle dawes Burt, and as always, I'm super excited to be here with you on a Sunday afternoon. Today, I want to welcome, first of all, all of our new listeners checking us out for the first time. Let me give you a little bit of background about what Real Chicks Rock is all about. It's all about creatively collaborating to connect and raise awareness regarding issues that impact women. And we've been doing this now for quite some time, and we do it by community service engagement, public speaking, mentoring, workshops, and we've been doing this platform, as I've told my gentlemen, since April of 2016. So it's been a couple of couple of years that we've been having these conversations and discussions and talks, and today is no different. I'm smiling a lot because I love music, sweet, sweet music, and one of the guests that I have here on my show today, that's how we originally met way back in the day, and we'll talk about that. And music has always been our connection. And so today's topic is the Soul Symphony. And my guest today uh, is Richard Cook and Ron Smith. Hello, gentlemen. Pleasure being here. Oh, man, I'm super excited. It's a lot going on. We got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to jump right on in there. I'm going to start with you, Richard. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so glad Absolutely you're here. Wonderful. Where Where are you from? I'm from New York, White, White Plains, New York. Uh, Liz, that's up. That's like up. That's a little upstate a little bit. It up, is. Up a little bit. Mm. By way of the Bronx. By way of the Bronx. I grew up in the Bronx until I was 11, and we moved to Say Washington that. County. Okay. All yeah. right quite a shift and, cool. mm-hmm. and change. Because mm-hmm. I'm a Bronx girl. Okay. So what kind of music did you listen to growing up in the Bronx? I know, but when you went to White Plains, did it different? Was it different or what? No, because I stayed true because back in my day, mm-hmm. we had Frankie Crocker on the radio wait, who, wait, play, who wait, played wait. anything. Mm-hmm. So, you mm-hmm. know, on BLS back then, which was an urban station, mm-hmm. you would hear Elton John, Led Zeppelin, mm-hmm. David Bowie, Stone, mm-hmm. David Bowie, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and and you heard the, the solid funk and R&B as yeah. well. So yeah. it's just real diverse growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, so it was awesome. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Ron, you, where are you from? Okay, that's a hard question. Is answer. that why? Why, Ron? Right. <laughs> born, born in Miami. Uh-huh. I claim Greensboro, North Carolina. Because okay. I spent most of my time there, but I've lived in New York. Yes. I've lived in Indiana. Yeah. You know, I've bounced around a good bit. So so then your soundtrack, your musical soundtrack is probably very diverse. What kind of music do you remember listening to when you were younger? Okay, I didn't know this until I actually moved, but Greensboro was a test market. And so a lot of record labels would send music to Greensboro to see how it would do. And mm. if it did well there, then they would push it around the rest of the country. Really? I didn't know that. So we were listening to the hip hop. We were listening, yeah. we had a hip hop station yeah. in 1982. Nobody yeah. else in the country seemed to have one. Ooh. Uh, we had jazz, we had uh, Miami bass, we had, uh, I listened to L.A. Dream Team and wow. listened to uh, New Orleans music and, and house and mm-hmm. club. And mm-hmm. So we got all that stuff, reggae, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that that was unique. Mm-hmm. But when I got to D.C. And, and everyone wanted to know why I knew Go-Go so well, mm-hmm. I thought everybody did. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we had a real, uh, you know, and then you, you mix in my, my folks and, yeah, and their yeah. music. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and because, Ron, you had such a diverse background background just being exposed to different things it, did that spark a love or an interest for you to want to get more into the music industry you know I, I was thinking about like the movie scenes like you know I, I try to get out but they keep pulling me yeah. back in that's how I felt with music I mean, every time I would say no nah, I'm not doing that and then yeah. someone else would come to me and say hey um yeah, we need a variety show in high school mm. you know do that mm. yeah, or, you know just uh, so I always got pulled back into music and and um even when I was uh about 12, mm. um, two of my neighbors that lived on my block were the big DJs in town. And so I hung out with them. And, and in order for me to, to get records, I convinced them to, to sign up for more record pools. That was back in the day when we had record pools. Yeah, okay. And, um, and, and you could be in these record <laughs> pools as long as the DJs did reviews right, of the records. Right, right. So I convinced them, listen, sign up for every record pool you can. Mm. I'll review all the records, but I get to keep a third of the records. Okay, okay. And that's how I built my record collection. Wow. So, um, and both of those DJs are still DJs today. Mm. One of them just finished being um, uh, the program director at WBLS. And, nice. and now he runs the block in New York. Nice. Um, and another one, uh, DJ Scientific, is uh, he's by day a NASA engineer, and at night uh, he is DJ Scientific all through the, wow. uh, the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I've been around the music for a long time. Did you DJ as well, too, Ron? Because you had um, that one third that you were getting records. Okay, and if they are listening, they're laughing because <laughs> because. 
<laughs> I was terrible. Oh! As a DJ. And, but but I had about three th- different things that I could mix. Okay. And so they could take a 15-minute break. I could do my little three things. They had to hurry back to, 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 come, to come save me. <laughs> you so, had a yeah, good ear, though. I had a good ear. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what got developed with the record pools. Yeah. I mean, just being able to hear hear the music Mm -hmm. so you were doing like promotions you started promoting like gathering you had a niche for gathering the right people together to put on these shows is that how it worked for you and and i think figuring out how to get people in the room right Um, okay you know even in high school i remember thinking okay there are three real good rival high schools around us Mm -hmm. so when i did the variety show i made sure we had one act from each of those other schools too, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we could get them to come to our high school for the show. Right. I mean, so it was always thinking that way. How do you create a show? And, you know, how do you make it move from, say, R&B to mm, hip-hop mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. still make the show flow? Mm-hmm. You know, so that was... That was the thing. Yeah, that was the thing. What, you remember your first one? Like, your first show that you put those elements and ingredients yes, together? Yeah. Um, um, what made it ridiculous was um, somehow I got the idea that um, three friends of mine young ladies that should do a dance routine to um, Sex Shooter. Oh, yeah. Remember, uh, That's the whole in the uh, Purple Rain. Yes, sex exactly. Shooter. Exactly. So, so somehow they ended up in Teddy's and uh, wow. and doing a dance routine, and, and it was very popular. Uh-huh. But um, that Monday morning, I was getting cursed out in the principal's office. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. so, yeah, I remember that very well. That was the first one. That was the first one. So you learned. Yes. Okay. <laughs> for you, Richard, how was, how was it for you? How did you get into... The industry, I mean, you're a U2, being in White Plains, New York, from the Bronx, having WBLS, the staple, that was the staple to listen to for music. How did you find yourself in the industry or embracing music more? Well, when I was eight, uh, my mother and I took my cousin and I to the Apollo to see mm-hmm. James Brown. Wow. Okay. And, and that was like, that was it. That was life changing mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. I mean. My cousin and I still laugh about it because it's horrifying when you're around women. I don't know how old our parents were then, but seeing women throw panties Ooh. and literally losing their mind. I was like, "Cuz I want to do this. This is what I'm going to do." Right? <laughs> and uh, and we still laugh about it. But between that and then, it was it was a magical time in New York then because Central Park. I mean, I can remember going to Central Park when I was like. 13 Mm -hmm. and back then it was crazy how things changed because even at 13 or 12 Mm -hmm. you could take the train from white plains to the city Mm -hmm. and nobody would bother you Mm -hmm. everything Mm -hmm. was just cool Mm -hmm. Uh, um, i remember one summer i saw donald bird Mm. i saw return of forever i saw mile vishnu orchestra oh my god you know all in one summer it it, 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 it was crazy right so yeah from then on, I was literally hooked on music, and then the transfer. Once I went to college, mm-hmm. uh, used to give parties. Yeah, and actually, I almost lost my football scholarship. Really, the coach was mad. He he said I was getting all the students' money, but uh, yeah, it was. You were an entrepreneur. I was. That's what I told him. I and said, coach, you're always teaching us to, to branch out. Yeah, of being yeah, 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 yeah. Think outside the box. Right. So, what kind of parties was it? Hip hop? Was it soul? Was it R and B? Was it everything? Yeah, it was R and B back then. Seventies yeah. was pure, pure uh, R and B. Yes. But, um, I went to Jackson State. So mm. imagine coming from New York, going to mm. Mississippi. Mm-hmm. So it was a culture shock, but uh, very much so. I broke rappers' delight there at the party, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was just kind of crazy. Yeah. Just, you know, things kind of transitioned mm, mm. in those four years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you we you have a love for music and you you see what kind of money you're making. But yet you both both of you gentlemen still pursued professional careers like in corporate. You've done a lot of different things. Ron, you were a teacher, you know, financial background as well. And you were in corporate. And and, and so you're moving through that course gentlemen and that was just not satisfying for you what say you richard you know i i I suggest to anyone to follow your passion gotcha you know i don't care how much money Mm -hmm. you make if you're not happy Mm -hmm. it just for some reason it just doesn't yeah add up from at least for me right i understand it it, it doesn't add up and um a perfect example and i was at ups Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. i have i have a real good friend who stayed to entire duration and you never know what your lot is in life right entire 
entire career at UPS, mm. and now he's on his deathbed. Oh, so no. he can't even enjoy his retirement. Oh, my. So, you know, it's just certain yeah, things that, yeah. you know, and I think about it because, of course, sometimes I think, hey, if I stayed there, my pension would be like, Whoop. but yeah. would I have been happy? Right. And the answer would have been no. Right, right. How, how about for you, Ron? It's the same. I'm, yeah. I'm just piggybacking on what he said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I joke about getting pulled back in, but the truth of the matter is, this is what feeds me. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is what feeds me spiritually. So, yeah. And seeing people develop and, and being able to brag about the fact that uh, there's so many artists that I can sit there and say, hey, I saw them first. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, one thing you gentlemen didn't say is you didn't mention money at all. You know, I ask you these questions. You talk about the music, the experience, the feeling, but it was never about the money. We're, we're going to we're going to talk about that. The other thing that you gentlemen um, are good at, too, is connecting the right people. Right. You probably don't get enough credit where credit is due in that regard. But to make a show or an event happen you got to have the right people coming together in sure. order to make that an experience in which people will never forget right, right? at the end of the day that's what you gentlemen are really pursuing and pushing and wanting to invite people to believe that if they come to this whether it's a party in the 70s in college or whether I'm doing a variety show you're never going to forget this right. it's going to be right. good right? right so you guys have a skill in, or just a talent or maybe a gut feeling, right? In knowing I need this musician, I need this DJ, right. I need this vocalist. How does that come about? Is that just years of practice, intuition? What do you, what do you say? We're gonna look at you. How about you, I, Richard? I think intuition and mm. just, just knowing people. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a perfect example is funny. I, I, I had I was having Belial, right? Yes. Everybody, everybody was like, we like Belial. I don't know what I should say. I don't know what I should say. What I'm about to say. Right? I like Belial's an just, artist. I, I don't know this person. This story. It's a good. Yo, okay. <laughs> what? So what happened? I don't know if I should say. Okay, you, we'll, you we'll come I mean? back. We'll come uh, back. How can I claim? Uh, you know what? Belial's different, right? Uh -huh. Great, great guy. Phenomenal. Yes, phenomenal, yes. Phenomenal guy. We, I right? know him as an artist. He's a and, great artist. And, um, but everybody, we all have our stuff, right? Right, right. And I. And I work in mental health as well. Mm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists I've worked with that mm. have mental health yeah. issues, yeah. Right? like most, yeah. most humans. So it was mm -hmm. just, I mean, we're the best of friends now. Mm -hmm. And uh, two funny stories. Uh, I was doing, I was out in Seattle in Portland, yeah. Portland doing shows with them, right? Mm -hmm. And the promoter that was in Seattle, her parents were in the, the Sprinter van, right? Mm -hmm. And they pull over and... She says, drop my parents off at this exit. Just imagine we're driving on 285 and yeah. we pass an Astrid Dunwoody and said, drop my parents off right <laughs> here, right? And Bilal we'll blurts out, oh God, I'm not getting paid my money tonight, right? And we all start laughing because, of course, it was, you know. Yeah, was, yeah. If she'll throw her, her yeah, parents, throw parents out, out on the side yeah, of the road. Yeah, I know yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting gonna get my money. Tonight. Wow. And, um, but yeah, yeah, just a great guy. Yeah. But, but just that connection. It's even like Ryan and I because both of us mm -hmm. are. Both of us are, I'm a lone wolf and Ron is as well, mm -hmm. right? So, um, Jodine Dorsey, I don't know if you know I Jodine. do, I've interviewed her too. Yeah. Hi, Jodine. Jo Jodine connected Ron and us mm -hmm. together. She, she kept saying, Rick, is somebody I want you to meet, boom, boom, boom. She's like, awesome. Ah, Jodine, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, She's eh. awesome, but she knew. Yeah, but yeah, she knew. She knew. We, we knew, and, we, and we've been, and the crazy part, I go over the top with mine, and Ron is like, do you really need all that, mm. right? He's sen but, he's sensible. And, and, and really, and yeah, it's <laughs> sensible, you know? And so I'm learning, I'm still learning okay. from him from that aspect. Mm -hmm. Cause I I want ten horn players on stage yeah. and yeah. you know, that, and it could be that know, New York in you. you know, right. It could be that flair. That again, you having that experience at the Apollo Theater just resonates with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm going to uh, tell a Rick story. Okay, that, uh, come on. Um, I was telling you that I used to hang out with uh, two DJs growing up, and uh, one of my greatest memories of a concert uh, was a thing called the Fresh Fest, mm -hmm. and which is the first national hip hop tour ever, yeah, anywhere, yeah, ever. Yeah. And even if you go online right now and type in ten greatest rap concerts, number one on that list is the Fresh Fest. Uh -huh. Well. Um, he has the distinction of being one of the guys that started that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and we're talking 1984. 
going to this concert, what I remember about it, it was the very first one was in the Greensboro Coliseum. And they had two stages. So if you're sitting at the front row watching one of, let's say you're watching um, uh, Houdini. Mm -hmm. And then you're in the front row watching Houdini. But Houdini goes off, and there's no transition like, okay, we got to move things off the stage yeah, right. because it's the second stage behind you. So you're on the floor, you turn around, and, see. and now you're in the back row watching Run DMC. Mm -hmm. But it never stops. Yeah. And it's just the, the, the energy of that night was electric. Yes. I mean, and like you talk about, do you create experiences that people yes. remember forever? Yes. That's one of those moments where my friends and I will talk about that even, what, 40 years yeah. later. We're still talking about that yeah. moment. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's the kind of thing that, that he does. And he's terrible about telling people about yeah, it. Yeah, well, he's going to talk about it today. <laughs> he's going to talk about it today. Congratulations on the Fresh Fest. Um, I remember I, I had that. A great, I had a great yeah. mentor then. Ricky, Ricky Walker is a genius. Yeah. And, um, you know, I never forget the night we were talking about it, right? And um, he's like, yeah, Rick, you from New York? And just imagine we got laser lights here and blah, blah. And I'm looking, I'm like, Negro, you crazy, right? <laughs> but then it's like three in the morning. I jump up out of my bed and my wife's like, what's wrong with you? I said, brilliant. Mm. That's mm -hmm. brilliant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the next morning I call him. I said, yo, we, we, we need to do, do it. this, right? Gonna and, do it. you know, and you talking about a cat with vision doing what Ron said, mm -hmm. do that and now do the universal circus. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. take a yeah. black circus on steroids. Beautiful. You know, it, it takes yeah. a special individual to be able to create something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, I, I came, I, I learned from uh, yeah, a real talented cat. And that's probably, you know, to your credit, why you're still viable today. Because you got to be in a space, Richard, to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. When we get to a point where we feel like we know it all, then we stop growing. And so you can continue to evolve because you honor those that have mentored you. You're receptive to change and, and, and knowing when to pivot and move because times have changed. Absolutely. Tremendously. They've changed over the years. They've changed in the past three years because of the pandemic and COVID. So we have to move differently. In your experiences, Richard, do you find that the musicians are still truly musicians or you feel has it watered down or changed a bit? How, how do you feel about music today a little bit? Honestly? Yes, honestly. <laughs> it's changed a lot. You know, um, I don't, there is loyalty, but it's not a whole lot of loyalty. Okay, okay, sir. Mm -hmm. um, Ron and I both have people that we've put on mm -hmm. that won't return our calls. They have amnesia now. They don't yeah, remember. They got, they got amnesia. I got and, you. I, and, and that's and that's fine. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because I, I have the mindset I'm I'm gonna be all right regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, and you mm -hmm. take that step back and you're like, whoa, I thought you were A, but yeah. you're actually B. Right. And, and I'm okay with that. But the sad part, it affects the business because mm -hmm. we need we need radio. Mm -hmm. You know, not only the fans, we need the radio, we need the artists, we need the promoters, yeah. we need all of us working in unison, yeah. especially now. And now City Winery has moved in mm -hmm. and they're taking advantage mm -hmm. of our market. You mm -hmm. know, when Ron and I were getting involved in this, we had Sugar Hill. Yeah. And Sugar Hill was like our canvas. Right, right. You know, right. Uh, it's not the same feel as City. I ain't getting on here. I'm not bashing people. No, I'm just no, saying, no, no. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, we're talking about it, the it, differences it really that is. things right. have ahead, changed. And they did what they did what we talked about doing 20 years ago. Mm. Exactly. And that was our thought was if we could create our own shipment circuit, mm -hmm. the things that we were doing in Atlanta, if someone else is doing it in Charlotte, someone else is doing it in Nashville, right. someone else is doing, and we walk all through the country this way, mm. and whatever we connect, whatever we do, we connect with this with this circuit, mm -hmm. and it then a tour makes sense mm. um, for all those artists that that meant a lot to us. Mm -hmm. um, now those same artists are working and they are on a tour, yeah. but they're on a city winery tour. They're yeah. not on this thing that we owned and could right. actually could actually uh, control and yeah. benefit from. Right, right. You know, a lot of times I, I talk to people and they go, uh, and you talked about money a minute ago, yeah, and. Um, they go, oh, yeah, you know, janky promoters. I was like, listen, if in the soul music game, if you were trying to get over or make money, you wouldn't be doing soul music. Mm. You might be doing country music. Mm -hmm. You might be doing hip-hop because right. there's more money there. Right, right, right. You know, right. but 
I don't know too many people who are truly in this that are doing this because they're trying to get paid. They're they're doing it because there's a passion. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think don't don't get me wrong. Yeah. Everybody wants to actually pay their mortgage. Yes. But, How about that? But at the same time, mm -hmm. I, I think it's really important that people understand that that I know that he does this because he wants certain artists to get the shine that he thinks they deserve. And I feel the same way. So do we feel that we're getting to a space, gentlemen, that because of the city wineries or people like that or venues like that that are going after uh, artists? And we could, we could keep it a buck. Mm -hmm. In most cases, they didn't even have a connection or a way or didn't even know what the artist brought, right? It would be people like yourselves that would bring them there sell out two shows, three shows, a couple of nights, then all of a sudden they've created this relationship and now you, they feel like they don't need you in the middle. So is it that we're getting to a place that the art of being a promoter or being that conduit and that connector is obsolete? Do we think that's going away? I got that one. I don't blame the artist for that at all. Okay. No. What? What I will say is this, it's a different model when you can take one entity and they are both the venue and the promoter. There you go, so, gotcha. So now you're taking a pie and you're mm -hmm. cutting it in half. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's there's a promoter, a venue, and an artist, mm -hmm. there's three different things, people that need to eat from this. Mm -hmm. And so that pie gets split up in thirds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's more beneficial financially Understood. if the venue is the promoter. Understood. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm not blaming anybody yeah, else yeah. for the fact that we have not been successful in creating the model right. to make it make sense for everybody. Right, right. Um, I will say that, uh, as you said, things have changed. Yes. And I think that we have to hurry up and change with you them got and, it. and be thinking about what's happening five years from now. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you have a, if you have a thought right now, by the time you actually can implement it, it might be five years. Down I the road. know that's right. So we have to be thinking. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to ask you the musician question. Richard was really kind in his response. So I'm going to ask you, do we feel that musicians have changed over the years? Like you've been in the game for quite some time, Ron. I mean, I met you through Sylvia Brown. Hey, Sylvia. Hey, and uh, Sylvia. we've always talked about we would break bread and eat. We would go and have breakfast. And the conversation was always about music, mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. albums that were out, mm -hmm. CDs and talking mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So do we feel, Ron, that musicians are not the same or they're still there? Because I feel like it's more electronic and more and it's not as much as people wanting to learn or play an instrument. What say you, Ron? Okay. Um, I believe that artists are there. Mm -hmm. and musicians are there. Mm -hmm. And young people are really about learning the craft. Mm -hmm. But we aren't celebrating those kids mm. like we should. Okay. I think we're celebrating people who are doing it the easier way. Okay. Um, I will say that personally, we know mm -hmm. some, some magnificent kids yeah. that are in their early 20s at this point right. that are professional musicians mm -hmm. and they are true to their music the art form yes, yes. Um, now how do we get them in the forefront mm -hmm. how do we get them with the light with the light shined on them yes and and that's what we have to talk about mm -hmm. because they're there mm -hmm. they're just not the ones that everyone's talking about yeah they're not the songs that people are listening to mm -hmm. and, I, and I think we have to find a way to actually celebrate them better mm -hmm. um, and so and I'm not again I'm not putting that on anybody no, no, no. I'm just saying the musicianship is really there yeah it's, but it's getting drowned out by by the drum machines and the simple simple yeah. simple tracks yeah yeah um Stay tuned. I yeah, think, I, think I, got I, I got you. I got you. I got you. I also you, think the, I also think the labels have a big part to play in that. Okay. Because I, I one artist in particular that I I broke in this market. Um, I'd never have a vocalist on my stage, you know, mm. Mm. and all all he has is vocalists on stage. Right. Now, you know. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just funny seeing that, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering at what point did they change, or right. was it pressure from the record label? Right. Hey, we need X, Y, Z on mm -hmm. here. To, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's working. It's I'm not working. knocking it. It's, yeah. it's working. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but um, it's just like 
Ron and I are doing what we do. It's still stuff that I'm going to be true to mm-hmm. in, in the pro- promotion game. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? yes, yes, so, yes, yes. Let's talk about it. Ron, you touched on young musicians and not getting the shine. I want to commend you both. Uh, Audio Wolf, let's mm-hmm. talk about that because you gentlemen had a, a vehicle, have a vehicle or platform where young, talented musicians come through, very artistic, very dedicated to the craft. They performed. We, you know, we've listened. We've paid uh, tickets to see them. Just awesome. How did that come about? Is it because you wanted to shine spotlights on young musicians? Who wants to Ab- take it? Absolutely. You, you, yeah, it's your, oh, your. Okay. All right. Sure. Yeah. Um, hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, around 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, we started a nonprofit called the Sound Education Experience, mm-hmm. and within that, our flagship program was a teenage jazz fusion band. Mm-hmm. And the idea was we would go out through Atlanta yeah. and find the best teen musicians that f- that mm-hmm. would f- create this band. Right. And and what we used to say was, we're not finding pl- uh, musicians that are good to be kids. We're finding good musicians and giving them a chance to step away from marching band and create their own music. Mm. You know, step away and learn how, what it is to be artists. Pair them with, uh, I'll give you an example. Like we did one breakout session for a, 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 a series of breakout sessions where um, we'd take our our um, sax player mm-hmm. and partner him with Ryan Kilgore who was this who was the yes. sax player for Stevie Wonder. Yes, yes. And we Ryan take the great. trumpet player and, and partner him with Jimmy King who was the trumpet player for Bruno Mars. Mm-hmm. And we did this with every music with every instrument. Mm-hmm. And um uh, Kyrie Simmons, the bass yes, player, partnered him Kari. with De- mm-hmm. With Devin Gates, mm-hmm. our bass player, mm-hmm. and, and um, they got to work with vocalists like like Rhonda Thomas. Mm-hmm. And so we so we partnered them with all these professional musicians to help them think about what it is to become a professional awesome. musician. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's been really cool to see them be teenagers at one one moment, and then you look it up and you're like, wait, you're 23 now? Yeah. And you're out. Uh, I'm sorry, you're in Germany. Yeah. Uh, you're in Portugal. You're, yeah. You know, you got a gig in Colombia. I mean, yeah. so I mean, so watching them really become professional yeah. musicians has been really gratifying. That's good. That's awesome. I had the opportunity to talk to uh, little John Roberts, the drummer. Mm-hmm. Similar situation because he's teaching at Berkeley, mm-hmm. and he can almost see it. Sure. In their eyes and how they. Um, behave and embrace the music they he can kind of tell who is really serious Absolutely. about it Absolutely. and who's committed and he really pours into those individuals because he wants to see them Absolutely. be successful at it and and we have three berkeley school of music graduates mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. um we have what, one juilliard mm-hmm. one new mm-hmm. school mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Georgia State University, Tennessee State yeah. University. So we, we have kids from all these different programs. And we have a couple of kids who did a couple of years in college and then ended up having opportunities uh, like Merle, uh, where he is a very successful hip-hop producer yeah. now. Yeah. But it was being a drummer mm-hmm. that give, gave him the foundation to be able to, to, to do what he's doing now as a hip-hop producer. Awesome. So. C- circling back to Little John, we, we did a master class at Tri-Cities. Yes. That Little John was a part of with Robert Glasper. Yes, I love Robert And it was Glasper. phenomenal. And and the cool thing about it, like Ron said, I mean, it's just like our upcoming show. Yes. We're, we're going to have students involved actually seeing the mechanics of yes. this. Because if I want to be a football player, guess what? If I get an opportunity to be next to LT, and yeah. he, that's going to inspire me. And it's the same thing with these musicians. Yeah. So when they actually see a professional musician, just like me being eight years old, seeing mm-hmm. James Brown, I was like, you. I want to be like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, I want to do that. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know how you have photos that pop up on your phone, just like you know, from from past. Yes, the memories. Past. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This morning, the photos of the kids working with uh, Robert Glasper and, and Derek Hodge, you mm-hmm. know. Like, uh, Mm-hmm. That Casey Benjamin, that, right. that, those pictures popped up on my phone this yeah. morning. So it's ironic. Right. Coincidence, you know. I think or not. <laughs> Let's talk mm-hmm. about where we're at today, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. A lot's going on. It is February. February 16th, we're going to have the Soul Symphony. Um, this is a phenomenal lineup. This is great. Let me ask, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Sure. Why Morehouse? Why are we going to have it at Morehouse? Is it because it's a beautiful auditorium, great acoustics? Like, talk to me. Why, why Morehouse? 
Why? International Chapel. Why there? It's a nice uh, place, but uh, I just want to oh, know it's why. Phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Place. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's one of the best kept secrets in America. It is. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. They have all new sound, mm -hmm. I mean, total redo. Mm -hmm. redo. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. As I said earlier, I went to Jackson State. Ron's a uh, <clears throat> Howard alum. <laughs> I know. And, uh, <laughs> And, you know, it's I've never, I've never H mentioned that. The H H U. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. And so, I mean, it's Black History Month. We, yeah. And I, I hate to say we want to keep it black, but we want to keep we it black. We want to keep it black. We want to keep it black. It's just too much going outside of our wheelhouse, yeah. and we need to keep it, you know. That's a great and we concept. need kids to understand it's okay, it's okay to go to HBCU. Mm -hmm. I don't know. My life probably would be completely different Same. if I didn't go to HBCU. Mm. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. So... Between that, giving kids the opportunity, we want Atlanta to, to really see Morehouse because, yes. I mean, it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal beautiful. place. It's beautiful. You know? And um, we had this idea, and we actually have done one of these Soul Symphonies before, mm -hmm. and it was always to partner with HBCUs and to make sure that there were proceeds that went to uh, the scholarships for that, that university. So, so yeah, Morehouse was always in our mind mm -hmm. as the partner. And, and I think a lot of our delays came because we wanted to let them finish remodeling King Chapel. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, pandemic and, mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of things kind of slowed us uh, up to come back to do it. But we were determined to wait until they finished doing what they needed to do with the uh, chapel mm -hmm. so we could partner with them. Yeah. You guys have done this... Um in uh, DC, Balt yeah, Baltimore DC, DC. Uh, area, first time, and so what was the response and the reaction there when you did it? Oh, it was, it was, it was a great Phenomenal. response. Yeah, and uh, and uh, interestingly, um, we had uh, Roberta Flack was mm -hmm. the headliner, and um, very happy to say that we could we had her when she was in great voice and mm -hmm. had had no health issues, and she's mm -hmm. having some health issues right no. now, and so we're we're happy that. Um, you know, on our bucket list of artists, you know, we were able to get Roberta Flack. Yeah. Um, and on that same lineup, we had uh, Eric Roberson. Yes. We had Rhonda Thomas. Mm -hmm. But we also had uh, Ndambi, mm -hmm. uh, Navasha Dea from Fertile Ground. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hosted by Marva, uh, uh, Marva King. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we also had a, a, a surprise guest in uh, Kenny, Lat Kenny Lattimore. Mm -hmm. But having them backed by a whole orchestra, you're talking about creating experiences that it's were different. It's a game changer. Yeah, it's a completely mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. experience. And if you've seen all of those artists, but you haven't seen them with an orchestra, then yeah. you still have not seen you've them. You've not seen them. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. getting to yeah. hear an Eric Roberson, uh, uh, like, like in that last one, he's not doing it this time. I actually know the, the, the set list. But the last time, he did a song called Just a Dream. Mm. And it's one of the songs that he, that he wrote while he was in college. Yeah. But even then, you could hear the strings and, and what what it, what the song could be, mm -hmm, with the full orchestra. Mm -hmm. and it was magical. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, and that's what's going to happen this time yeah. as well. Yeah, it uh, is. It yeah. it is phenomenal. Um, Stephanie Mills, Avery Sunshine, Rhonda Thomas, and Eric Robinson. I've had the honor of hearing each one of them individually, whether it be kind of an acoustic vibe, small piece, maybe three musicians to maybe six or eight. I've seen them at, you know, City Winery. I've seen them take the stage at the National Arts Festival, mm -hmm. the Jazz Festival yeah. here, Atlanta you know, Atlanta Jazz Festival, be on the main stage, right. you know, doing it. I've seen um, small spaces like uh, Center Stage where it's a little bit more You've intimate. Seen them at moods. You know, I've seen them at Moods yeah. and, you know, and, I, and I've seen, uh, you know, one perform in front of 25,000 mm -hmm. people in Chicago, you know, for um, Chosen Few. So I've seen the different arrangements and opportunities for them to sing. And they, as artists and vocalists, they are great. So I can only imagine having an orchestra behind them, to your point, Joe. Well, you don't have to imagine because you'll be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there, but I'm just saying it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be epic. I, I told Ron I wouldn't use this word again, but it's going to be an elevated experience. Elevated and experience. And the reason why is just like when you hear the harp, when yeah. you, or, or when you just hear that, yeah, you, yeah, you know, going yes. through a song. Yes. And I think about the DC show. Mm -hmm. Navasha was doing um, Phyllis Hyman. A Phyllis Hyman mm -hmm. song, and mm -hmm. people were in the audience crying. Crying. Between that and the violin yes. and her voice, and yes, everything just coming together. It was mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is just not. Is like this a hard. resurrection of what? Uh, a, a style that Barry White would do. Come on, gentlemen, you know help me here. Okay. Come on now. Can I, I got to say yes. this. Come and, on and, here. And going full circle. Yes. I've always had, going back to what I said earlier. Yes. 
those shows I went to as a kid in Central Park. Yes. You know, we talking about that was the era of CTI Jazz mm -hmm. with Bob James, mm -hmm. um, Grover. But they mm -hmm. always had strings. They always, always had, had arrangements. Barry White was doing Love his Love thing. Love 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 Unlimited. Unlimited. Isaac Hayes was doing mm -hmm. his thing. Mm -hmm. You know, all these James Brown is the man's mm -hmm. world with mm -hmm. the violence. So, yes. So growing up hearing that, mm -hmm. I just, man, I just always felt like, uh, we needed more of that. Yes. We needed to get back to that. We do. That's real soul. That's Indeed. real soul. Indeed. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> there is starting to be, we talked about changes to gentlemen in how music is being present, presented. And I'm starting to see your points are being taken by other people. They're having the same idea in the sense that full orchestras are performing for hip hop. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it is changing how people are tasting hip hop, even the classics. Right. So it, whether it's old school hip hop to current stuff with trap or whatever it is, mm -hmm. mumble rap, whatever you want to call it. But when you have a full string orchestra behind you and it just sounds, it resonates right. differently. Right. Right. So are we, are we at a point that we are re like resetting and recurating how music is, is handled and presented? I think, Music is in constant ev evolution. Okay. And the idea that an 18-year-old 35 years ago is not is going to want to hear the very same thing 35 years later is ridiculous. Mm. So they've elevated. We've elevated. Mm -hmm. uh, we've thought about music differently. We've been exposed to so many different sounds. Yes. And, and, and so many different experiences. Even the last Soul Symphony... Seeing like an Eric Robertson in a tuxedo. Yes. Yes. I mean that was, you know, uh, completely. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yes. I mean, yes. And, and even when <laughs> yes. he told, even when he told me, because he looks good in a suit, mm -hmm. he looks good in a pair of jeans. So yeah. good. <laughs> tuxedo. Even when he told me, he said, "Can I wear a tux?" I was yeah. Like, I said, "Is it a, is it a corny tux?" Yeah. He's like, no, after what I went to the Grammy, he's like, "I was like, rock it." He yeah. came and looked like James Bond, and yes. it was incredible. Yeah. There's all these uh, in, these moments that actually mm -hmm. go, "Okay, I will never forget that," mm -hmm. and that's what we have to create, and that's what's happening with the orchestras and and the hip hop. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, and we yeah. love it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, even when you know when Guru first did the whole uh, uh, jazz mm -hmm. album and and really merged with the with the jazz artist, mm -hmm. that gave you a whole different sense of what hip hop could be. Right, right. And I think that's what's happening with music completely today. Mm -hmm. That that you know, you know, I mean. I, I, I didn't really. I mean, I didn't buy it, but yeah. I mean, but Lil Nas X doing the thing with the with the country stuff yeah. and the old town, or old yeah. town road. Yeah, or, I yeah. mean, it's understanding that good music is just good music. It's just good music. Yeah. Do you gentlemen have a say? Uh, because these particular performers, Stephanie Mills, Avery Sunshine, Rhonda Thomas, and Eric Robinson, are seasoned professionals. Yeah. So, do you give them the autonomy to decide what they're going to sing, how they're going to sing it, or do you have some input or suggestions because of your experiences as promoters or curators of we, experiences? We craft it with very loose parameters mm -hmm. so that they're allowed to still be the artists okay. that they are. Okay. Um, what we did not want to do was create um, a cover band and a tribute mm. band. Um, so, uh, 75% of all the songs are going to be their originals. Nice. Um, Yay. <laughs> we are incorporating some classics mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you'll get to hear the songs mm -hmm. you know as well. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of Stephanie Mills is her whole, I mean, people don't realize how, I mean, and, and even when I'm talking to people out in the street and saying, hey, you know, we have this show coming up, they go, oh, Stephanie Mills. What's her song? What's her song? And then we'll sit there and run twelve songs down, and they'll go, "Oh yeah, that's my yeah. oh, I oh, yeah. she did that. I, yeah. Oh yeah, home. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. never, uh, never knew love like this. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, sweet sensation. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I learned to respect the power of love. There's so many songs, mm -hmm. and so, so yeah, I think, um, I think we can get shut up and let them do what they let do. them do what they do. You know? Okay, yeah. and and getting the word out. That's an interesting uh, segue. So thank you, Ron, for that because. It is totally different. We talked about this during before we had started. 
you know, it was about flyers. You know, they're beautifully spent money, and these are nice because back in the day, it might have been paper, <laughs> might have been maybe a colored paper, may, might not even look this nice. <laughs> and so, graphics has stepped up; it's beautiful, and so you can hand them. You putting them on cards, you cards, uh, cards. You're talking to people, but it's different now. Sure, totally. You know, it's like you, you, we had this pandemic. Don't get too close to me. You know, I don't know you. Why are you talking to me? So you don't even feel necessarily always comfortable to to engage with people in a space like this. And so now we have to depend on social media platforms and email blasts and word of mouth and, you know, still the radio stations having relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Is it so d does it deter you and what we got to do or how do you feel about it? I think it makes us a little unique because mm. we understand the need for social media mm -hmm. we understand um uh that radio is different yeah but we, still do, but we still use radio we yeah, understand you know um our websites and, and such mm. and but at the same time we do recognize that there is a power in handing somebody a physical flyer True. or True. standing in front of somebody and telling them about it as well mm -hmm. all those impressions are necessary in this marketing game now mm. and so we are very aware that we have to get better at what we do socially, mm -hmm. so social media. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a power. Like you talk about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you go out, you come out of a um, Apache cafe, yeah, and you go to your car, and there'll be a dozen a flyers flooded. on your car, right? Flooded. And ours would be one of the 12. <laughs> now we put a, a flyer on the car, and we're the only flyer. You're the only one. But, but the beauty of that is that they'll remember this flyer. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so it's still effective. We kind of have to find a balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, by you coming from uh, Richard, by you going to Jackson State and you know, that's in Mississippi and you you broke ground with, with people and college students there musically. Do you think there's still some more groundbreaking that you you need to do or that's still available to us today? How do you think um, music is resonating with people today? I think music is always going to be music. Um, I just think um, it's. Music changes, but it doesn't change a whole lot if okay. you really listen to it. Okay. Uh, and a perfect example, I had a friend over yesterday, and a song came on. I said, oh, this guy made me funky, the Headhunters. He mm. said, no, that's Eric B. and Rock Kim. Right? <laughs> I said, no, dude. So I played, yeah, God made me funky. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was like the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's gone from sampling to, it's just, it just goes full circle. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, um, I think it's beautiful. I mean, and I love the piece you just said about hip hop mm -hmm. and um, hip hop in the orchestra. Yeah. You know, Derek Hodge did that with um, Nas for mm -hmm. the yeah. 25 year uh, anniversary. Gorgeous. Ill Illmatic. It, it was phenomenal. Ridiculous. So um, there's always room. And one thing, that's one thing I like to toot our horn about yeah. that, we, that we add because we're actually bringing these kids to the table yeah. and exposing them to these different brands and different mm -hmm, styles of mm -hmm, music. Mm -hmm. So now that's what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. They go in one way, like we had this one kid. Oh, I'm jazz only. I only do jazz. Right. But now they're, they're branching out and all yeah, this stuff yeah. because they hear the different sounds. Mm -hmm. They're seeing how you can, okay, I could take some of yes. this and I could take some of this. And, yes, yes. You know, oh, you know. Yes. So I can't wait to hear Kevin's new project because, you know, yeah. Kevin at one time wanted to be a comedian, you mm. know, so it's, you know. Mm. But all of those different experiences actually – Expand his music. Yes. Right. right. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and I, you're absolutely right. And I think I think of Danny all the time with the trombone, and he's like, you know, if if Wynton Marcellus wouldn't play at the Lincoln Center, I won't play it. Yeah. And then the next time I see him, he's got uh, and I never uh, Derek <laughs> the, the the whatever that that uh that but so, Australian but so on, so, oh, no. that Australian yeah yeah that, you know I mean and he's got a whole funk band happening yeah. and I saw him three months back. In uh, Florida, with um, a group called Ghost Note, mm -hmm. and they had the funkiest show ever. And it, and trust me, this is not what Wynton Marcellus does. But just watching them evolve, yeah, is it's been great. It's and, awesome, you know. And figuring out how to become professional musicians. You, I mean, you know, they have to, you know, hey, you, you take the job that walks in through the door. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's you know, to evolve and saying something yeah. you said earlier. Mm -hmm. I've, I've one thing. I my my old football coach, we had six people on the staff that ended up being head coaches. Mm -hmm. 
that helped me when I got to UPS because I wasn't scared when I was in management to coach and train my people right, up. Right. And eventually, I think I had seven or eight that moved on to be to go into supervision. Mm-hmm. And the same thing kind of applies here. You mm-hmm. got to know your strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Social media is not my cup of tea. Understood. You know, we laugh about it. I'm a dinosaur. They laugh at me at my <laughs> job. They laugh at me at my job now because you remember your password? I was like, no. <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah. now that we're entering in this this new phase, mm-hmm. you know, ten mm-hmm. years ten years later, mm-hmm. right? Because the last right. the last right. show I did technically was Robert Glasper at the Variety Playhouse. Mm-hmm. You know, saying so, that was that I was ten years that, ago. I mm-hmm. saw that show. Did you? I love Robert Glasper. I'm yeah. a fan, yeah. Yeah. and we'll yeah. talk about and, that. But yeah, and I'll say this too again. He's terrible at tooting his own horn. Yeah, but so many of the people that you know in Atlanta as being, you know. Staples of our music, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he brought them. I mean, Foreign Exchange. I uh, love Foreign Exchange. He was the first too. one to bring them. Uh, Robert Glasper. Um, yeah, he was doing Bilal, what 15, 20 years yeah. ago. I mean, just there are just so many. Musicians <laughs> Thank you, Richard. That, yeah, and, and most people don't know that. Yeah, because I mean, there, I think there are two kinds of promoters too. They're the kind that do a really good job of also letting you know who's doing it, mm. which is important. Right. Very because important. Very when important. you're going out there to get sponsors, people know, hey, right. you know, yeah. that's that's Jason Orr, yeah. that's Jay Carter, Jay Carter yeah. or that's mm-hmm. uh, 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 Chris, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Mm. And, and so they do a good job of that. Yeah, yeah. And then there are those who don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and it, we just want to see a good show, and no one needs to know who I am. But that's not always the best way. Yeah, to go. it's not right, the right, best right. thing. I, yeah. And I think that's just old school uh, thought process yeah. where you feel that your work will speak for yourself. It's not. Yeah, it's not about you, and you don't really want to be. But you you do have to toot you your to, own horn. Yeah, you yeah. do have to let people know that. Um, you're humble about it and you appreciate the opportunity to do it, but it's your hard work. It's your, it was your creativity. It was your phone calls. It was your emails. It was being in the right place or showing up to catch people, to have that conversation, to, to, to get them to see the vision that you have and them to be a part of it. And then it's, again, it's about the experiences. Like mm-hmm. it's just phenomenal. The, all the artists that you've worked with, Richard, I'm sitting over here like, huh, huh, like I'm a fan of yours. Cause I'm like, Oh, oh cause I've loved every show that you've had some connection with or the art or the artists that you've worked with. I have, I just spent money last year to go to Napa Valley, never been, was on the bucket list to see Robert Glasper, the, yeah. the blue note mm-hmm. for three days. Mm-hmm. And it, it encapsulated what you talked about because we rented chairs. We sat there, there was a main stage and they said, Thank you when they finished the last song and we turned our chairs around and faced the other stage and it just went that way for three days and it was a beautiful experience and he too is a person that was, I was jazz and it wasn't until I hooked up with the likes of Bilal who hooked me up with Common, who hooked me up with uh, Jay Dilla Dilla, that I was like, what's this hip hop and just infusing it with his classically Mm -hmm. trained fingers and now he's five Grammys in mm-hmm. you you know what I mean and 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 three albums black radio one two and three and all this stuff is, and and doing movies and soundtracks yes I will pay I'll get on a plane I've gone to blue note and blue note in New York is but this yeah, big yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. right exactly. but to see him in a more intimate freestyle setting and then he pulled up Michelle De La Cello mm-hmm. to come and mm-hmm. sing and she's singing the I'll Be Sure song mm-hmm. night and day yeah. her way I was like it was worth it yes. right, right. it was it was right. so yes gentlemen thank you I'm super excited about the Soul Symphony because I believe it's going to be a night of, of epic proportion right. because it's 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 fabulous uh, uh, entertainers as individuals right Individually, they can sell out. Right. I mean, beyond um, the, the vocalists themselves. Yes. Uh, like the last show, we had Cyrus Chestnut, you know, yeah. who's, a, who's, a, who's considered one of the great jazz pianists of our day. Yeah. He was there. Mm-hmm. Um, Casey mm-hmm. Benjamin. Casey. Mm-hmm. Um, ben Williams was on bass. Yes. Ben, yes. Yeah. Right. Lee Pearson was our conductor, who is now the drummer for Chris Bode, but mm-hmm. he's, you know, been played with, he's played with everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, so... 
that's what you can also expect in the musicianship. Yes, yes. Um, and we've got the same thing happening this time. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think it's going to be one of those things that people are going to be able to say, hey, I was there when. Yeah. Ironically, you know, the, the Robert, Robert Glasper connection. Yes. And when we talk about connections, uh, DJ Applejack was the one that told me. <laughs> Applejack told me about it. I, you know, I was yeah. like, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. Shout right? out to Applejack. Go so ahead, boy. We're in DC. <laughs> we're in DC getting ready to do the Soul Symphony. Yes. And I see Robert Glasper is in town. Yes. And Jabari, who does arts, beats, and lyrics, he's doing arts, beats, and lyrics in DC. Yes. Like, so, yo, man, let's go check out mm. uh, Robert Glasper tonight. So we Good. go. Good. And after the show, I tell him, I say, hey, man, I'm about to bring you to Atlanta. Yeah. He, and he gives me this, like, you know, like, Negro, please. Right, like, sure. Please, like, all promoters, you know. Yeah, some say that. Don't follow mm -hmm. up. But I followed up, and uh, it worked out perfectly. It's a great and, move. Thank you yeah, for doing that. Yeah, was, Thank you for so, doing that. And he's going to be back here June, uh, in June. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about seeing it. But, you know, again, setting and ambiance is important for mm -hmm. me, right? Like, why have an artist in the space and the sound ain't right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so like acoustics are important you know and and them being able to be the artist that they have been gifted by God to be is important so yeah I'm 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 going to pick and choose where I go to see because it's a it's a whole thing for mm -hmm. me you know sound and you know just the the whole shebang mm -hmm. so soul symphony is uh, Friday February 16th um at the Martin Luther King International Chapel in Morehouse um awesome acoustics in there. I've seen Sisters in Song there. <laughs> the women could sing. I've seen it. I know what that place can bring from a sound perspective. This is going to be beautiful. Do we know where and when? I don't want to get ahead of myself. Is there another one this year or we space it out? Is it every couple of years that we're going to do something iconic like this? What say you gentlemen? Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is the part. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Let's see you, gentlemen. If, uh, if you let, if you let uh, Richard have it, it's going to be a tour that goes all over the world next week. Sure will. <laughs> okay. Bring that back. Come on, and Ron says. <laughs> on the other side of this one, what we're going to be doing is we're in talks with a couple of different cities, uh -huh. a couple of different universities. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that once a year we always do something here in Atlanta. Nice, and, and, thank and you. They partner with with Morehouse on this. Thank you. Um, but we do plan on doing some other things, and there's some places uh, like there might even be a summer series. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yet. We don't know. We're, we we're don't having, know. We have some really interesting conversations mm -hmm. because of this one. Right. Um, so on the other side of this one, we'll sit down and, and really yes. uh, map out our plan. But, yes. Uh, the the beauty of this one too is all of our musicians are here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. so uh, so that gives us some That's room. That's great. To, that's great. Interesting thing. It's good Michelle, stuff. Michelle, I want to say this about our friendship. Our friendship, right? He's he he's the dude that, you know, I'm going big. I'm going bear hunting, right? With, yes. With a BB gun, and he's like, and he's like, <laughs> shoot the rabbit. Shoot the rabbit. Why you going for the bear? You got a you got a BB gun. Yes. Right? Kill and the rabbit. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah you're right. you, you gotta, gotta go. You're right. Right. But I'm always big game hunting, right? <laughs> but it balances you know each other out, <laughs> right. though. So, yeah. It works out because what do they say? If you shoot for the stars, stars you'll right. still be you land right. on shoot the moon. For the shoot for the moon. Shoot for the moon. Shoot for the moon. So that's what you're doing. Absolutely. You got to do that. That is the problem for most of us gentlemen as as entrepreneurs or just getting out of our own way. Sure. Mm -hmm. So my I tip my hat to you, Richard, because you think big mm -hmm. and it happens. Like yeah, how many yeah. times has it not really happened for you? Right. Yeah, so know. so from an inspirational perspective, mm -hmm. we need to think big, no doubt. you know, no doubt. and then because coming from that we'll get something, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. may not be the whole thing that we aim for, but right. I mean, right. you've done phenomenal work, yes. you know, because you thought big. Right, and I will say this too, and first of all, I don't think, we, we didn't spend enough time talking about the fact that you've been doing this for eight years. Yeah, yeah, it's not about me. All right, no, 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 it needs to be, because <laughs> I think in a lot of ways, what we're doing is all the same stuff, same yeah. work, yeah. and that is um, presenting people and storytelling. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, Music is storytelling. Our shows are storytelling. Yes, yes. Um, our filming them because I, I remember when uh, when Rhonda was interviewed here, yes. she talked about her documentary. Yes, that's storytelling. Yes, um, and we're doing the same kind of filming of this. Yes. So that'll be a documentary as well. So yeah. we, we want to make sure that we keep telling our story because the truth of the matter is, twenty, thirty years from now. 
hopefully we'll be here to talk about it. But yeah. but if we weren't, the the work would still be there. Yeah. And if somebody at fifteen years old. 30 years from now, yeah. who's going to be exposed to all the people. We, they might discover India Davenport because of your uh, interview. Yeah, They Absolutely. might discover Melissa Morgan because of yeah. your interview. Yeah. And they'll be curious enough to go listen to the music. That's right. Um, they, they might discover Rhonda Thomas. Yeah, you know, and they'll they go will. listen to the music. They will. And so we have to tell our stories. You got to. I, I've had kids ask me about Watt Stacks. Um, and, and that documentary is the reason they know about those artists. Yes. Um, same thing with the, what last year at the Summer of Soul. Mm -hmm. um, that was 1969 in New York. Mm -hmm. Kids are discovering it yes. because the, the film is there. Mm -hmm. And so we, so you're telling the stories is so important. Thank I think you. You know, I think, I think we need to talk about that I more. I appreciate that. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I want to thank you guys for just, you know, just being men of integrity. Because um, oftentimes when you're a promoter, and now I want to change it, you're a curator of experiences, right? Because promoter could be loosely thrown around. Um, you. You, you, yeah. you honor what you say you're going to do, right. right? You're not putting people on and they don't know what they had no idea. Nobody talked to them. You're not trying to chase a dollar. You know, money will come, but you really are putting out good things. Um, and that has to be noted. Now we're in a time, and it's always been, but now it might be more readily discovered or quickly discovered that people are trying to capitalize off of a movement, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big, you know, hip hop 50 years. And so people are saying they got these big shows with all these names and the people are like, nobody called me. I'm not on that. And so people are trying to, again, take what is meant to be pure. And, and corrupted. And I just want to thank you guys for being men of valor, right? For as long as you've been in the business, you can walk down the street with your head held high. Nobody's trying to come for you because you've been men of your word. You've been fair to the artists that you've worked with, with the musicians you've worked with, with the vendor, the venues that you've been engaged with. You've been doing the right thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Because we need that as as black and brown people, because we're not extended the liberties of other promoters and other people that don't look like us. Mm -hmm. So we have to work harder mm -hmm. and our sound and our shows have to be better. Right. right? We can't be sloppy because exactly. immediately our own people will throw us to the wolves if we don't do right. Well, right. They'll get on social media and say that show was this and this wasn't that. Da, 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 da. So thank you for time after time bringing us a level of excellence and bringing us things that we didn't even know music we might not have been familiar with artists we might not have known but because you curated a nice package together of performance and musicians together we learned something Thank you. You know thank what I mean? You. So thank you for that we need it because we're in a time now we don't have soul train anymore. I used to learn a lot from watching Soul Train. Sure. Some artists I didn't know. I didn't know about Jerry Butler until I saw him on Soul. You know what I'm saying? Because I did, that might right. not have been my sound of music. Right. Right. But he was on there and he was good and I learned him. So we need to continue to create these type of experiences through sound, through music. Nice, beautiful artists and performers that people are like, I'm looking for something to do. It's Valentine's. I got a sweetie. I don't have a sweetie. I just want to go and hear you, some you good music. You want to find a sweetie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but I will say this too. Um, even in talking, like I was at, at an event Friday, and in talking to, to some of the, they're not even millennials anymore, they're uh, Gen Zers. Okay. And so I'm handing them these flyers, and I'm explaining that Stephanie Mills was the original Dorothy in the Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and they had just seen The Wiz at the Fox. Right. But I'm like, this is the original Dorothy. Yes. And, um, and yeah, that was almost fifty years ago almost, now. Almost wow. So yeah, and and explaining that yeah. and, and and how you you're actually seeing a living legend. Yes. Um. And so who can still who can, sing? Who, who's still in good voice? And still can right. still sing right. and looks beautiful right. and enjoys what she does. Right. Because she was a baby when she. She started. was fifteen or sixteen you know, yeah. when she started. Right. Exactly. This is gorgeous. So, yeah. So I mean, so telling that story and letting people know that. This is history, but it's your history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need to know your history. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's also right now. Yes. These people are putting out music right now. Mm -hmm. Eric Robertson has an album he just put out. Yeah. Avery Sunshine has an album that she's about to put out. Rhonda has a project she's about to put I mean, so, so this is right now as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. um, and because we were working with those kids, those same kids that, that Rhonda was nurturing. Yes. 
I, last night I got a song from one of them. It's like, can Rhonda write to this song? Yeah. So, so it's keeping everybody That's relevant. That's awesome. And, and you learn from them all. That's Michelle, awesome. I know, can I say something? Yes, you can. Before we go? Yes. I, I, I want to thank um, Richard Dunn, mm -hmm. Jay mm -hmm. Carter, mm -hmm. and Freddie Lusk yeah, yeah, yeah. for giving us a canvas yes. to do what we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. I mean, and, and that canvas, one thing that people don't know, I had an artist, an unknown artist, and when her band hit, Dunn, Fred, all of us together was just like, "Yeah, what just happened, yeah, right? Yeah. That same sister, we got a call from a, girl, a sister that used to host my show. She sang background up until when Prince yeah. transitioned. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, wow. But that, that canvas allowed so many people yes, to get on yes. and really created the yes, scene. Yes. Oh. Yes. And shameless plug, if you want to purchase a ticket, you can go to yes, www. Absolutely. Dot the soul symphony.com mm -hmm. the soul symphony.com mm -hmm. and they can get more information that way. yeah no yeah. shameless plug. we're gonna come again. we're gonna give it again okay. yeah no no okay. no no yes you're absolutely right thank you for for mentioning yeah. that yeah because it is people that went before us and now look you know look at jay carter now with the mm -hmm. one music fest it's, mm -hmm. it's doing, phenomenal doing and then he t he's taking it to Houston, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in May, doing mm -hmm. like a, a day or two out there just to give them a taste. Mm -hmm. um, but the things that he's done, and shouts out to technology with the drone and the yeah. over the shots, because now you can yeah. see how beautiful we look right. mm -hmm. in a space listening to music. And the, and the fact that he gives the young mm -hmm. and the older and everybody gets and and everybody's learning yes. from it. And that's what it's supposed to be. Right. So mm -hmm. the ageism is out. It's yeah. All about the music, right. right? And so, and that's why I'm just so excited. Again, I'm honored for you gentlemen to be here. Soul Symphony is Friday, February 16th. It's going to be at the King Chapel at Morehouse College, 830 Westview Drive, Southwest. Where can they get the tickets, Ron? Tell the people again. Okay. Go to www. I know yes. nobody does it anymore. <laughs> thesoulsymphony.com mm -hmm. alright mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> shouts out to all your sponsors I looked at this brochure pretty dang heavy here a lot of people uh, Magic, uh, Classics 1029 shout out to Donna uh, Shealy um, just everything got that on vinyl, Lamar's Shirley, like you got everybody said the entertainer's giving you guys a thumbs up on this mm -hmm. and he's got his wine you've well, got this is an amazing wine you've Not, tasted it on not, not, well, you know, it's funny. I don't drink, but everybody I know that has had it said it's phenomenal. It's, it's delicious. And, and it's got 93 points. It's like one of the highest. Highest. So that's unusual for, you know. Very sometimes good. Sometimes people just get into it for vanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, yeah. but, but say get yes. into it for taste. Yes, a lot we of. hear you, Joe. Yeah, a lot of great, okay. a lot of great sponsors are uh, backing this. So, yes, please get your ticket. I'm going to be in the place. This is great. Gentlemen, this is great. How can people find you, Richard? I know you said you're a dinosaur. But, it, you know, is there any way that people can reach out to you or you're like, no, I'm not on social media? I'm moving to Medellin, Colombia, March 16th for good. For real? So, uh, yeah. I'm Congratulations. Not gonna be, I'm not going to be reachable unless you reach me at my restaurant. Co Ooh, I love it. Congratulations. <laughs> for good, good, you're for gone. Good. Forever, wow, forever. wow. I'm gone. So. He'll come back for Soul Symphony. Yeah. He will. Back, You'll come I'll be back, back for, for that. I'll be, yeah, be back for that. And, yeah. You know, be back two, three times a year. A year, but, but that, congratulations. Yeah. I'm excited. It's like senior year at my mom's house. Couldn't yeah. Wait to get it. <laughs> congratulations. Let us know how it is because I may be an expat. I may move uh -huh. somewhere, uh -huh. you know, and just come back, and, but I'm going to go somewhere else. Ryan, how can the good people find you? All right. Well, first of all, an, another shameless plug, I work a lot with Rhonda Thomas. Yes, you do. So, Hi, Rhonda. So um, a lot of the shows that I put on and, and, and the projects that we're doing, mm -hmm. you can go to rhondasings.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, well, on the booking side, that's how you'll reach me. Mm -hmm. um, the other side is uh, just if you go to uh, Facebook, you can mm -hmm. find me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's Harmony in Life. Yes. Um, which is, you know, my brand. Yes. Uh, Ron Smith, Harmony in Life. Uh, you can do the same with uh, Instagram or or um, um, X or mm -hmm. any of that stuff. You can mm -hmm. find me. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, out, I'm out here. You're out here. Mine is actually Global Chef Society. So mm -hmm. Global go, Chef Society? IG, yeah, I'm going to have to pull you, bring you back again and talk oh, about oh, your, yes. your restaurants oh, yeah. and cooking yeah, and all that. Yeah, the last dining experience I had, I had uh, Juan DeMarcos from uh, the Buena Vista Social Club. Really? We actually have conversations with the artists, 
And we, had Cub- food. and we had Cuban food, you know, and it was, it was just phenomenal. I, I, went, I went to one where he had a courtyard, and it was uh, a night in Paris, and it was uh, like, how many courses? Five. Five. Uh, five, course, five. five course meal. Um, uh, the band was doing a, a West Montgomery Live in Paris, Paris. 1963. Yes. Um, I mean, it was it, beautifully curated. The uh, French art. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was. A, I mean, he does some, some amazing shows. So I have to go to Columbia to get the next one. Is I have to go? Yeah. Okay. I'll be in. I'll <laughs> I'll stay connected. I'll meet your wife. We'll good. Yeah. We'll just. That's I'm gonna come on down. I, my passport is good. Good. I keep it up to date and fresh. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go at any time. <laughs> You're welcome. You, you I'm you ready to go. I am ready there. to go, and I live near the airport, so you ain't say nothing but a word. Just let me know, and I'm out here. I have, I have a 16-year-old son. Uh, he's a junior. He wants to be, be, a, be a pilot. I got one more year with him in high school, and then after that, how, how's the song go? I'm a free man, free man, and I'm a free man bragging about it. Listen, that's my time. You know where to reach me, Real Chicks Rock. I am everywhere. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Go to the website. Go subscribe. You know we blog over there. But before I pop out, (laughs) Richard is going to be so tickled by the way I end my show all the time. You know my favorite. Frankie Crocker would say it all the time in WVLS 107.5. He would end his show by saying this. May you live to be 100 and I live to be 100 minus a day. So I never knew knew that beautiful people like you passed away. Thank you for checking out Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next show.